Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming a very belated February anti-haul. It's almost like the middle of March when this video is going up, but it's only because I have so many videos that I wanted to get done. So thank you for joining me on this video. In case you guys are curious about what I have on my face today, I am wearing the Smoky Glow Midas Cosmetics eyeshadow palette. I will probably already have this look up on my channel, so I'll try and remember to link it. Otherwise, you can find it in my videos on my channel. And without further blabbering, let's get into my anti-haul for the month of February. Okay guys, so if you have watched my low buy, no buy update, you are familiar with my legal pad. I use it to brainstorm video ideas and I actually wrote down things for my anti-haul on this thing. So it's so funny because some of this stuff I actually did end up buying. Like the first thing on here is the Bretman Rock and Wet n Wild palette, bought that so I can't anti-haul it anymore because it's in my possession. I heard my friend Amanda from Makeup Just For Fun raving about that palette and I've been so into drugstore finds lately guys that I couldn't pass up on it. I haven't tried it out yet at the time I'm filming this video but hopefully I'll have a video up on it soon. So let me know what you guys would like to see with that palette. The next thing I anti-halt is the Milani Salt and Pepper collab. They did two eyeshadow palettes for $20 as well as some lip kits. It looked like they had two lip kits for $12 each. And honestly, <laughs> I don't know, there was something so off-putting about this palette. Like, I love the idea of the collab. I love the 90s throwback. I like that they were trying to do like a nod to the CD. For all you youngins out there, that used to be this silvery looking disc that we would sometimes put in CD players or Discman to listen to music and was basically like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> when I was growing up, all my friends had Discman and then I finally got one and I just thought I was the coolest thing ever. And it's so funny because I'm old enough where I remember still listening to a whole album and I know people still do that but I honestly don't listen to whole music albums anymore like when you had a CD you listen to the whole CD like many 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 times over and I just remember like growing up in that era when you would listen to like the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC like I knew all of the songs verbatim so not so much anymore so I only really listen to like the radio nowadays I don't really listen to music in my spare time anymore I definitely spend more time watching YouTube than listening to music so anyway I like the whole concept I just didn't love the execution don't really feel like the eyeshadow palettes are calling to me which trust me I'm always happy when I don't like an eyeshadow palette because Usually I have the opposite problem. I like so many things that I need to like scale it back. So every time I see a collab or a palette and I'm like, ooh, I don't want it. Phew. I feel really good about myself. So easy pass on that one. The next product I am anti-hauling is the Pat McGrath Sublime Perfection Concealer. Came out with 36 shades. She had, she came out with 36 shades. They're $32 a piece. Creamy, lightweight, and full coverage. They also came out with three new brushes and three shades of under eye setting powder. So I originally bought Pat McGrath's foundation when that launched last year and that also launched with some loose setting powders as well as brushes. I bought the kit so I got everything in one and I honestly didn't really think it was worth the price point. I do think the foundation is nice. Like I've since gone back and used it and I plan on using it up but I don't think it's anything to die for and even though I'm curious about the concealer, I'm not curious enough to spend $32 on it or any of the other stuff that launched with it. So I'm more than happy just hearing other people's opinions on it and pretending like it doesn't exist because I'm not curious enough to spend that kind of money. At this moment in time, I've already found my favorite concealer, probably of all time. It's the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I also really do still like the Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer from back in the day. I don't even know if they really make that one anymore and I really really want to try the 
Stay Naked Concealer, which came out with their Stay Naked Foundation, which I really enjoyed in 2019. So if I were to try a concealer right now, it'll probably be the Urban Decay one. But I recently, in January, bought a new shade of the NARS Radiant Creamy. No, it's the Creamy something something. It's the Pot Concealer. And I love this guy. So I've actually hit pan on this one. This is my old one. And I wanted a different shade in this, so I picked up a darker color, but yeah, I really like this, so not in the market for concealer, powder, or any Pat McGrath brushes right now. Okay, so the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the P. Louise Love Tapes Face Palette. I don't know, I wrote this down, so maybe I wrote it down wrong, that sounds kind of odd, but... At the start of February of 2020, there was just like an influx of purpley, red, pink palettes. It felt, it felt very Valentine's. It felt very right. I'm not complaining. I used to love wearing pink and berry eyeshadows, so it was fun to see that trend come back. And of course, I bought the Love Palette. I bought the Millennial Pink Palette. I bought the Smoky Glow Palette. And then we also had the P. Louise Palette. There's so many red tone palettes coming out at the time. And the P. Louise one, honestly, it was so funny. It just looks so clunky. And then it also has like two highlighters in it that looked very much like the Physician Formula Butter Bronzer um, like press that they have. It looks like Sandy Beach. I don't know. It was very interesting, the setup of the palette. I don't really love when there's big face products in there with eyeshadows um, and it's also for, it was retailing for like 42 pounds I believe so the whole thing just really didn't appeal to me. I do love the P. Louise eyeshadow base but I really haven't tried anything else from them so very happy to pass on that. The next thing I am anti-hauling is the Olimar Brighton and Bronze palette. So they came out with three palettes for $25 a piece and they also came out with a brush set for $36. Now I have a friend that loves Olimar. Amy loves makeup. Is like such a fan of Olimar. She really really makes me do a second glance at the brand. I originally bought their two eyeshadow palettes because everyone was raving about them. I think I bought them last year. I can't quite remember or like the end of 2018 I picked them up because everyone was raving about them because they come in BoxyCharm a lot. So I was so so curious about the eyeshadows. I didn't really end up loving them. I do kind of want to pull them back out of my declutter pile and try them one more time just because of how much Amy loves those palettes. Um, so we'll see if I get the time I might do that. Otherwise I already listed them on my Poshmark because I really didn't find myself reaching for them but I kind of love this like blush situation that they have going on so there's like a powder shade and then two bronzers and I love that and I love that it is like skin tone specific the only problem I'm having is I can't quite decide if I'm like the medium shade or the dark shade and then I also kind of want to try their blush palette that they have so I was definitely looking at placing an order and by the time I was done piling everything into my cart I had like a $90 order and I almost did it but I decided since I had committed to my no buy and my low buy. I'm not really supposed to be buying face products and so I decided to pass on it but I'm so so curious about it. It's definitely on my wish list to pick up maybe after my low buy ends or if I hear really good things from you guys. So let me know if you've tried any of their products, specifically their face products and what your thoughts are on them. Okay, so the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the Too Faced Sun Puppy Bronzer. So it's so funny how much of a cult following this like Too Faced dog situation has. So they originally launched the Clover palette, which is inspired by Jared Blandino's like pet chihuahua or something like that and I mean I'm a dog person you guys know I bought the Makeup Revolution dog palette which I personally thought was a lot cuter than the Too Faced one. I don't know about the formula because I haven't used that palette yet but packaging wise I thought it was adorable and so I really like that concept but I just didn't really think the Clover palette was that cute and then they did a highlighter and now they're doing the bronzer. I think it's a really interesting color combination. I don't know that I love the pairings. Like there's darker parts of the bronzer and lighter parts of the bronzer. I haven't really seen anyone swatch it or anything like that on my skin tone so I have no idea. I haven't seen it in store or anything and I'm not really curious to buy it so pretty easy product for me to anti-haul 
this month. Okay, so the next product I'm anti-hauling is the new ColourPop Luxe Gloss formula and they came out with eight shades for eight dollars i have no doubt that they're gonna launch more shades of this lip gloss but the whole packaging the concept like they really sold this thing it came in cute millennial pink packaging you could buy a whole set i saw so many of my youtube friends had purchased the set and i did think some of the shades were really cute and i was definitely attracted to it and i definitely contemplated it but I don't wear lipstick or any kind of lip formula enough to justify buying all of the shades, let alone one. And I just got some really cute lip glosses in from Midas, so I'm so good on lip products right now. I would love to pan a lipstick by the end of 2020, like that would be amazing for me. I also did a huge lipstick declutter at the start of the year or maybe it was the end of the year I can't remember maybe it was around vlogmas just because I knew I had so many liquid lipsticks I wasn't reaching for so I'm so happy like I finally got all my lipsticks to fit in one drawer got rid of some older stuff that I was just hanging on to and things like that so I have to be very careful with what lip products I bring into my collection again I'm on this like low buy no buy journey and lip products is definitely like a no for me this year so I've failed so many times on my low buy and things I'm not supposed to buy at all and so I'm trying really hard to stay strong and not buy any lip products and yeah I think this is beautiful I just don't think I need it you know how Colourpop is they always suck you in with that low price point but I'm staying strong <laughs> The next thing I put on my anti-haul list is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette, which I, like the clown I am, ended up purchasing. So, spoiler alert, if you didn't know, I did pick that up. You can go watch my February haul video, very shamefully admitting that I picked that up in that video. This is the Jeffree Star Queen Bitch Mini Velour Liquid Lipstick Kit for $52. I'm also anti-hauling the Extreme Frost in Choking on Ice for $50. And the five glosses for $18 that came out with the Jeffree Star Bloodlust Palette. So it's funny because, you know, they launch these things as collections. And I'm sure, like, Jeffree Star fans are like, let me buy everything, you know? If you really enjoy... A creator it's not that hard to get sucked in and don't get me wrong I've definitely been there with Jeffree Star I've bought lip products I have the mirror from the Jawbreaker collection like apparently I thought that I needed to have that mirror and honestly I never use it I don't hold a mirror when I do makeup I have my simple human mirror and that's the only mirror I use in my makeup room it's a fun thing to just have like when my friends nieces visited they thought it was the coolest thing ever to to like sit there and be like welcome back to my channel and it's like it's such a gimmicky thing because I don't use it I know I see a lot of people using them in their videos but with the way I do my makeup and my YouTube channel I just never end up using a handheld mirror so never gonna buy one of those again and I see people buying every single color because it's like it's like how I buy the Starbucks mugs you know people like to buy these mirrors and I just feel like it's such a waste of money but I'm not judging I just feel like personally for me it's such a waste of money because it's like if you have one mirror isn't it but then I bet people would say that about eyeshadow palettes it's like if you have one eyeshadow palette do you really need all of them and it's like yeah I kind of do so anyway <laughs> anyway so yep anti hauling the mirrors the glosses just aren't my vibe I really really like his liquid lipstick packaging I know a lot of other brands have used that same component now since Jeffree Star and maybe even before I think Dose of Colors has a very similar component but Wet n Wild definitely does as well and maybe even Kylie some of those new glosses look like they're in Jeffree Star type packaging so I like the simplicity of those and then with the glosses they're so over the top they kind of look like something you would want to display just not my vibe and then I'm not really into wearing like purpley glosses on my lips I think neutral nudie shades is what I would put on as a gloss and then the Queen Bitch Mini Velour Liquid Lipsticks. I was one of those, again, I used to be a much bigger Jeffree Star fan than I am now. I purchased his Equality Bundle and I thought it was like the bee's knees that I was going to use it all the time. 
I never use it. I don't use it as eyeliner. I don't really use the lipstick shades. I have them in my drawer just in case I ever need like a fun lip shade, but I don't do anything with them. And so I've learned my lesson. I'm not trying to collect every single mini velour liquid lipstick bundle and a bundle of purple lipsticks is so not what I need right now. It's just not what I'm into, I don't wear too many fun lip colors. I like to keep my lips pretty neutral and then go crazy with the eyeshadow. So yeah, for all those reasons, passing on that. And then as far as the Extreme Frost goes, Choking on Ice, I do love those Extreme Frost. I like the concept, but $50 is just insanity. I would never, ever, ever get enough use out of that to justify the $50 price point. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've definitely bought a ridiculous amount of highlighters for much ridiculous, for many, many, at many, many different ridiculous price points, but I don't need to keep making the same mistake over and over again. I can always learn and grow, so I've learned not to buy crazy colorful highlighters. Also, I've just never had good luck with Jeffree Star's formula. I used to own his original highlighters in the shade King Tut. I also bought the highlighter palette from the Jawbreaker collection that he launched last summer. I wasn't a fan. Teresa's Dead really sold it to me. She loved that highlighter palette and it made me want it. And then once I actually got it and I tried it out, I didn't like it. So I got rid of it. But for all those reasons, I'm anti hauling all this stuff. Bloodlust Collection, I did buy the palette. So there should be a video live on my channel already. You guys will have to check that out and let me know your thoughts. So the next thing I'm anti hauling is the Tom Ford. The shade illuminates Soft Radiance Foundation with SPF 50. Mel Thompson did a video on this saying the new Estee Lauder foundation is basically the same thing. I love Estee Lauder's Double Wear Foundation, so I, I was curious about the new foundation that they launched. I am technically on a foundation no buy. I did buy two foundations though. At the start of January, I kind of shot myself in the foot there, but um, I couldn't say no to the Wet n Wild like $5 foundation and then Milani came out with a new foundation. That sounded like it was gonna be bomb. Spoiler alert, I don't really like the Milani one. I do like the Wet n Wild one. Will I buy the new Estee Lauder one? Probably not until I've finished up some foundations. There's so many where I have just a little tiny bit left. So I kind of want to focus on using up what I have. And as far as the Tom Ford one goes, I just don't think I'll ever be at the price point. I don't think I'll ever be at the point in my life where I can spend like 80 something. What, how much is that foundation? I didn't write down the price, but I feel like I remember it being like 80 to 100 or even more than that. So I just don't think I would be comfortable. I love some of the high-end foundations I have, but I don't have luxury foundations. And yeah, I just don't see myself picking any of that up. So passing on that, definitely anti-hauling that. So Ofra launched two new eyeshadow palettes. They did the signature eyeshadow palettes in Galaxy and Sweet Dreams for $32 a piece. So I feel like Ofra has been doing a lot of eyeshadow. Typically they stay in like the highlighters and the face product lane. So it's kind of fun to see them like branching out and doing different types of eyeshadow palettes. So this one was like a five pan uh, format and I thought that was really cool. A lot of people are really into smaller palettes. I do think the price point with Ofra is always a little bit off, like $32 for five eyeshadow pans and you don't really do eyeshadow very much. I feel like, you know, not quite sure about that decision um but i think they're cute i don't want to buy them i don't i'm not really into them they look like every other palette out there so i think if you're a huge ofra fan you would enjoy them and i think i've seen like samantha march and angie say that they're good but it's not something i'm drawn to so very happy to anti-haul that and the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the Tatcha Liquid Silk Canvas Primer for $52. Now, you guys all know the Tatcha Canvas Primer that they came out with. It was like a bomb. I actually originally bought that because I was so curious because I do like Tatcha. Like, I have a 50-50, like, shot with Tatcha. Some of their products I really enjoy. Some of their products I'm like, eh, like the dewy cream. I don't get that product. It's like... Anyway, I don't want to talk about that right now, um, but yeah, there are some products I really like, some products just end up being like very meh, and also overall the products are very pricey, so I bought it, I didn't like it, I didn't like that I had to stick my hand in it. Also, I'm not really a primer person, if you're new to my channel, I don't typically wear primer on my face, I just lotion up and foundation goes on my face. So I am curious about this primer though, because I just heard Mel and Smoky Glow, Hannah, 
both talk about the primer. So maybe during the Sephora sale, I might pick up the primer, but for now I am anti-hauling it for the month of February. So the next thing I'm anti-hauling is more skincare, the Milk Vegan Cleanser for $30. So I actually got a sample of the cream that they came out with. Everyone was going nuts for it because of the neon packaging I'm guessing is what really attracted people to it because milk isn't really like a skincare brand so I don't really know why people were going nuts over it I think maybe some people got it in PR not quite sure but I did get a sample and I didn't think it was very good so there's no way in heck I want to spend 30 bucks on a cleanser from milk and yeah just thought I'd mention that in case you guys were wondering about what I thought of those products the next thing I'm into hauling is the Beauty Blender Concealer for $26, I think, 40 shades. I think Beauty Blender has come a long, long way since the launch of their complexion products. So the foundation was kind of a disaster a little bit. They really got dragged for not having enough shades, which I'm so glad like we've all moved past like dragging a brand every time they don't have enough shades because it's like, it's like beating a dead horse. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's not give anyone attention that isn't you know catering to your needs you know it's, it's a little I don't know anyway let's not even go there I think honestly like if I had unlimited funds I would try the Beauty Blender Concealer because I heard really good things about their foundation even from people with my skin tone like people would write in the comments every time I mentioned the foundation that they were really enjoying it that I should try it out and I have been in the vicinity of Beauty Blender's foundations, so I've seen it in person, and I should just get a sample, so maybe sometime I'll do that if I'm in a bigger city with a Sephora that carries the line. Um, maybe it'll be fun to get shade match so I can try it out, but yeah, I'm sure the concealer is good. I just don't need to buy any concealer. Refer to my points when it came to the Pat McGrath one, um, but it's always nice to have options. That's my big thing. Um, these days. So the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the Too Faced Born This Way Natural Nude Eye Palette for $45 and the $42 Liquid Highlighting Palettes. Oh my gosh, I think that Teresa's Dead almost sold me on that palette. Not even, she didn't even really like it that much, but it just looks so beautiful on her. Um, when she reviewed it, she had like this beautiful neutral eye and I was like, ooh, that copper shade is like making me want to face and then I was like nope 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 she doesn't even really like it you don't need it like you have all of those shades Karen so didn't buy that thank goodness but yeah I don't know I feel like another neutral palette like Too Faced how original like you really you really stepped it up these days but I do kind of like that it's not as obnoxious and it's a, like a thin palette and it's not the tin packaging so I think that's nice if you're like on the go and you love neutrals I think that could work for you the real offender to me is the light highlighting palettes I think they are so weird looking like who chose the shape like I get that a lot of people would just do like a rectangular shape palette like a face palette like a NARS palette but no they were like let me fuck the game up and make it look like a dinosaur egg I don't even know. It's like, it's not even like a dinosaur egg. It's like a skinny, it's like a skinny, I don't know, compacted egg. It's, it's so bizarre. I don't, I don't really like the packaging. I think some of the shades look nice, but it's like, who doesn't have a neutral highlighter at this point? Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> do we really need Too Faced to launch that product at this moment in time? I'm going to go with a no on that one. Okay, so the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess 2020 collection. So they did an eye palette as well as Heat Wave. Now, I'm guessing this is just Heat Wave, their highlighter bought back. I remember when Heat Wave used to be like a, a like a myth on YouTube or like a legend. Like, people would be like, oh my god, remember Heat Wave? Like, it was the best highlighter ever. Estee Lauder should bring it back. And I still remember, guys, back in the day, I was at my old job and all of a sudden I was like in a meeting in a conference room and I got a notification from Trend Mood saying Heat Wave came back and I like literally like shit my pants because okay I didn't literally shit my pants but I was like freaking out because I was so excited because I was like oh my god it's like finding a unicorn you know like because all these like OG YouTubers would talk about Estee Lauder Heat Wave 
ask me how many times I use my heat wave highlighter. It's still in a drawer. I think a lot of people said that MAC something was a dupe and then I think also like Soul Hollywood which is a highlighter I have and I decided to whip it out and use it but yeah I have all the gold highlighters I even did a oh ow I even did a video back in the day where I swatched all of my gold highlighters like the famous highlighters and they were like all the same so it's so funny how like being on YouTube and being into beauty like sucks you in and then you end up with the same gold highlighter from like eight different brands. It's kind of ridiculous. So anyway, I'm glad to see that the heat wave, wave is still strong for Estee Lauder, that they're still raking in the dollars with that, but hopefully they can come out with something a little bit different and fun <laughs> next summer. Okay, so the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the sugar pill capsule collection so this is $42 and I think it's pretty much sold out everywhere I think I saw some on Beautylish but yeah I think it's like sold out on Ulta and stuff and then Ulta I think accidentally leaked that there's another one coming and I swear I check Ulta like every Sunday morning just because that's when they put like their new releases on there and it was on there I swear I could have bought it like I think I like hesitated which was my bad um, but then I think people said that it was like a preview and I was like, mm, I'm pretty sure that Ulta like leaked it. But anyway, both those palettes, you know, after contemplating, I'm like, no, like you don't need it. It's a pop of blue, like I had mentioned in my will I buy it video. So not going to get them. But I did get to see the pink one in person at my Ulta store. And I mean, it was it was cute. I, I thought it was a cute idea, but I swatched the shimmers and they weren't that revolutionary. And I pretty much hate Sugar Pill because I bought one of their Pro Palettes and I did not see the hype at all. And so I always like caution you guys. I know a lot of YouTubers rave or used to rave about the Sugar Pill Pro Palettes, but don't watch old videos. Like if you're thinking of getting one, watch like current videos on the palette because I don't know if they had like a formula change or a lot of people say like Sugar Pill was like the first like palettes to come out with like color so maybe at the time you know with what people had they thought that was the greatest thing ever but formulas have come such a long way and there's so many indie brands and so many mainstream brands so many mainstream brands doing color now that it seems like from what i've seen of other people's videos a lot of people don't recommend sugar pill anymore so i just want to caution you guys in case you're balling on a budget you might not want to run and jump on the sugar pill train. So the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the Marc Jacobs Hydrating Coconut Lip Oil for $29 and their Glow Away Coconut Body Stick in three shades. So just so you guys know, I am a sucker. I am a slut for coconut. Like, I love coconut. I love coconut scented things. Like, it just makes me so happy. So a coconut lip oil sounds wonderful and glow away coconut body stick like I don't even know what I would do with that body stick but the fact that it could have me smelling like coconut might be the only plus point in that marketing pitch but I'm not gonna buy it no I'm not gonna fall for the coconut bullshit so passing on that the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the Huda Beauty Skin Wishful Skin Glow Enzyme Scrub for $39 I think $39 for a scrub is the most ridiculous thing you could ever do with $39. Like, I could justify $39 on an eyeshadow palette all day long, but on a freaking scrub? Like, come on, people. There are so many other scrubs out there. I've seen so many people, like, pick this up or receive it in PR, and it's great. Hey, if you got it for free to try out and tell people about it, like, good for you. But the people that are paying their hard-earned money to buy a scrub... I mean, like, that seems pretty crazy. I have one scrub that I use. It's the Tarte, like, deodorant stick scrub. I I don't probably exfoliate as much as the normal person does, but I don't like to overly exfoliate my skin either. And I usually get, like, a facial every once in a while, too. So I feel like I take pretty good care of my skin. But, yeah, I just, I just don't understand $39 for an exfoliator. That seems... A little bit over the top on the price point if you ask me. 
So the next thing I'm anti-hauling, are you surprised? I'm anti-hauling more things. The BH Truffle Blush Collection. There's nine shades, $12 each. This palette situation is so attractive. When you see them all together, they're so like, I don't know, just attractive. They're like, come by me. Like they're like all cutesy and they're like, uh, uh, we're so cute. Look at us. And I'm like, no, bitch, I don't need any more blush. So yeah, it's always fun to like look at things. And I just think BH is such a fun brand. I think that they definitely deserve more hype. I like their formula. I think it's decent. It's not the best, best like formula I've ever seen, but I think for the price point and if you don't want to like break the bank buying makeup, I do think BH has a lot of fun things to offer. And I think, you know, offering nine different options of blush with four shades in each palette is awesome. And I have, I have their Blushing in Grease palette that they came out with their travel series. And I think that one's really good. So if these are anything like that, I would say you've got a safe bet if you're on a budget. I'm not buying them because I don't need another blush and I'm not supposed to be buying any blushes. So that is that on that. The next thing I am not going to buy is the Urban Decay Wired Palette for $39. And so it was funny because if you saw my Will I Buy it video, I kept joking saying this is like the weird palette. <laughs> just because I don't know. I just didn't think it's like. You know how people always say, don't fix what's broken? I think the electric palette, it was time for it to retire. It had been around for a long time, and Urban Decay hasn't really done anything like crazy colorful in a long time, and then they replace it with the Wired palette. Like, that was pretty anticlimactic. Like, I don't know. I just feel like with the name, and like I get it, electric wire, like, you know. Anyway, it was weird, okay? And then it was fine, like... I was like, oh, it's kind of cute, like, whatever. And then I saw it in person, and I swatched two shades at my local Ulta store. And they swatch, honestly, they swatch okay. And I don't know if you guys watch me on my Instagram stories, but I had swatched some BH Cosmetics palettes, like the new palettes that they came out with, I think, for their travel series. There was, like, a Tokyo palette and a Switzerland palette. I swatched some of the shades in the Tokyo palette, and I promise you they swatch better than the Urban Decay weird palette. So if you want some colorful shades and you don't want to spend $39, the BH ones are like 16 bucks a pop and you can have all the fun colors you want in my opinion. So I'm kind of thinking of picking up the BH palette. I've been thinking about it ever since I swatched it because you guys know green shades just like fuck me up. Those are like my favorite thing and yeah it seems like everyone's still coming out with green shades which I'm not complaining about at all but yeah let me know what your thoughts are on the wired palette are you guys satisfied with the wired palette or do you wish they had just left the electric palette be or just done it a little bit better the one thing i do want to give urban decay props for is i love the people that they sent pr to it really seemed like they had spent some time trying to find youtubers that really like to play with color i saw annette's makeup corner got it in pr as well as Lauren May Beauty. I think Annette said it was definitely her first time getting PR from Urban Decay and I just thought that was the coolest thing ever because they actually pick people that like color and I think there's so many brands out there, so so many brands out there that don't do due diligence when it comes to who they're sending PR to or what they're sending them. So for example I've seen Colourpop send Angie so many neutral palettes and like I know Angie's like trying to get into neutrals, but I feel like people like Angie are the people you want to send like fun, colorful things to because they can actually do those palettes like a lot of justice and like people like Annette, like that makes so much sense for them to have spent a little time researching who to send something like that to. I definitely give Urban Decay props for that. I think that was really impressive. In my opinion, I definitely felt like I saw people that love color review it, which is important because if you know somebody that only loves neutral shades, like, what are they going to do with a colorful palette like that? So, totally makes sense to me. If you guys disagree, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And next, we're moving on to the opposite of the weird palette. It is the Viseart Paris Edit Palette. And... 
I don't know. I don't know how people get excited about this palette. The old, like, okay, here's my thing. I don't hate neutral palettes. I really don't. I, I'm wearing a neutral eyeshadow look right now when I got the Smoky Glow palette on. And there's definitely some fun pops of color. So I can go either way. I love neutrals. I love color. But the thing is, the thing with Wizziart that I don't get is their price point and their shimmer shades. I didn't like their shimmer shades the few times I tried some of their palettes with shimmers. I love their mattes, but again, I don't reach for their mattes as much as I used to because even though, again, they were like a legendary brand on YouTube back in the day, if you started watching YouTube in like 2015, 16, like everyone was talking about Viseart Neutral Mattes, Viseart Neutral Mattes, Viseart Neutral Mattes, and I bought into that and bought the neutral mattes, I bought the warm neutrals, I bought the dark edit, and you know, they're nice, but again, you they're professional makeup artist products. So it's nice to see Vizier trying to get into the regular market where they're offering smaller palettes, smaller pans, they're mixing their shimmers with their mattes because that's something they don't do with pro artistry is what I learned is if they have shimmers in with mattes and you're doing like work on a set or like TV, if you get sparkles in the mattes and then the sparkles show up on camera, it's like a whole thing, I totally get it. So it's nice that they're trying to get into the regular consumer market, but I just, maybe someday I'll try another one of their palettes and try and give their shimmers another shot, but I have not been impressed. So very, very shocked when I see them come out with another palette, another palette. They must be doing well. So if you've recently tried a Viseart palette, I would love to know your thoughts. Like, do you guys think I should just keep, keep on keeping on, or do you think I should give them another shot? I'd be really, really curious to know what you guys think on that. The next thing I'm anti-hauling are the PML Papagrath Labs Opulent Glosses in 8 Shades for 30 bucks a piece. So if you guys don't know the channel Rented Fashion Cat here on YouTube, she is Pat McGrath obsessed. I think she's the one that actually found Pat McGrath and then she was like, Karen, look at these palettes. We used to talk a lot more than we do now. I just, uh, I'm so terrible at keeping in touch with people. Kat, if you're watching this, I love you. I love you, I love you. I hope you're having a wonderful day. But Kat loves to buy every Papagrath launch and she doesn't just buy one. No, 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 no. She buys like the whole thing. So I know she bought the whole set of these glosses. I would love to know her thoughts on these. I am not gonna lie, I think they're beautiful. If I was like some boss fancy lady that wore like glittery, glittery lipsticks or had like Met Galas to go to on a weekend basis, I would maybe be into this. I kind of want to buy just one because I love her regular glosses, the non-glittery ones. And um, for some reason, the purple one keeps like calling my name. It just looks so beautiful in the packaging. I'm not going to buy it, but I, I do think it's beautiful. And yeah, you know, Pat McGrath's glosses are pretty bomb. This is a different formula though, so I don't know anything about it. But her like flesh lip gloss is amazing. <laughs> so the next thing I am anti-hauling is a You Are A QT ColourPop collection. So this came out with like a palette and some super shocks and you know the usual song and dance. But the palette I think is kind of a snooze fest and I you know ring the shame bell because I did cave and I was so proud of myself because I hadn't bought any ColourPop. I was like oh my god, I'm gonna get through this year, I'm not gonna buy any ColourPop, and then it would be a year of no ColourPop, and then I got paid, and the mint palette was on sale, and I was like, let me try that mint palette though, give it here, give it here, um, because I was planning on buying the Huda palette, now I think I'm not gonna buy the Huda palette, because the mint palette was like my fix, and it's like, I got a $12 palette, or I can buy a $29 palette, like it doesn't really make sense, also Mel Thompson kind of talked me out of it, because she did a review recently on them and she didn't seem to like them very much so I feel like all those reasons make me want to stay away from the Huda palettes so we'll see they haven't launched on Sephora yet so we'll see but yeah I don't know I think the Your Cutie palette just really looked like a snooze fest so if any of you have it let me know that if you like it or not or if you regret buying it because maybe some of you love it maybe it's like the best secret hidden gem from ColourPop and we're all sleeping over here so 
yeah, let me know your thoughts on that because you guys know I'm always curious to hear what you think. Okay, guys, we're almost to the end here. Hang in there. There's so much stuff happening. It's crazy. So the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the Fenty What It Do spray for $30 and the Gloss Bombs for $19. So the spray was easy because I have so many sprays I'm trying to finish up. I just finished one of my Urban Decay All Nighter sprays and I was so excited. I have two huge bottles from Ofra I need to get through. I have a Kat Von D one that I bought for, for forever ago, for before she was canceled, that I'm now trying to pan. I got so many setting sprays. I got setting sprays coming out of every, everywhere. So I don't need to buy another one. And $30 is like an intense price point for me. Like, I don't know, it doesn't even look like you get that much. So I am very happy to stay away from that. The gloss bombs were a little bit tough. That clear gloss was like, it was like, come on over here, girl come on over here and get your clear gloss. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then somebody commented like $19 for a clear gloss is basically criminal. And also I thought of my So Juicy Gloss, which I do really like this. This is the shade Princess Cut. And I really like these. I like that it's a squeezy tube because if you have a clear gloss and you have a doe foot and you put the gloss on, over like a colorful lip it's going to transfer into the gloss because you're dipping the stick back and i am not about to use a q-tip or use my finger to put on a gloss so for all of those reasons i'm saying no to the clear gloss from fenty and also the chocolate something was also like winking at me and i was like bitch no 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 i'm not buying lip products this year so pass on that the next thing i'm anti-hauling is the MAC Loud and Clear Collection. So that had two beautiful extra dimension skin finishes for $37, six eyeshadows, five lip glosses, and five lipsticks. Honestly, the extra dimension skin finishes are the things that really like spoke to me. There was this like peachy shade that was like, come on over, come on over, baby. You know, you remember that song? I think I just sang, was that Christina Aguilera? Yeah, I think that was Christina <laughs> Please don't demonetize this video because I sang that song. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, so funny. I just can't believe how much I wanted that. And I was like putting it in my car, taking it out of my car, closing the, you know, putting it in my car, closing the browser. Like it was so beautiful. And I think I finally like made peace with the fact that I'm not about to buy a $37 powder that looks exactly like the Mel Genesis blush, which I already own. So anti-hauling all of that stuff. The next thing that I am anti-hauling is the, let's just do the two color pops together. So I have the All That Eyeshadow Palette for $18 and the ColourPop Sailor Moon Collab as well. So the All That Palette, I think, is their Valentine's collection. It's kind of cute. Don't get me wrong. I think I saw a few people got it in PR and I did think it was cute. But the thing with ColourPop is, and especially if you go down that lane of like, I gotta buy every ColourPop palette, which is what I did. Like in 2018, 2019, I was buying like all the ColourPop palettes. And honestly, it does get repetitive after a while. I think I was in denial about the fact that I was buying a lot of the same things. Like I was like, oh no, it's so different. It's so different. But really, not really. You know what I mean? So I think that if you have been buying ColourPop palettes for a while, you probably already have the shades from the All That Eyeshadow palette. And the Sailor Moon palette, I'm not gonna lie, it kind of is like, like it's like, you know, it's like purring at me. It's like, come, come over here, come over here, just, just try me out. And I'm like, no, no, but it's cute. I saw it swatch out today too, and I was like, ooh, those colors look so fun for the spring and summertime. But now that I'm thinking about it, actually, some of these shades in the Smoky Glow palette, like this shade, Jump Cut, is very reminiscent of that like quarrely shade in the Sailor Moon palette. So maybe I'll try and do something with that and try and avoid buying the Sailor Moon palette, which I'm going to do because again, I'm not buying, I'm not buying ColourPop this year. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, say no to ColourPop kids. So the last thing on my anti-haul list is the Hershey Etude House collab. And I thought this was adorable. I'm not really a fan of Hershey chocolate. I'm definitely like a Cadbury bitch. Like 
let's be real, like, can't touch this. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> so it's not the fact that it's something that nostalgia wants me to get, but it's still, I think it's so cute. Like, they, they're so tiny and cute, and the chocolate bar packaging, and, like, the marketing person in me is, like, oh, so cute. Um, but then I saw Jeffree Star's video, actually, on the palettes, and... He saved me. Just kidding. I wasn't I wasn't planning on buying them. They were like really expensive. I didn't write down the price, but I think I saw the whole set was like upwards of 50 bucks. And I'm like, no, thank you. And it was like, it's coming from overseas and their I think their website isn't in English. I can't remember. I did take a peek at it and I'm not criticizing the whole situation. Totally fine with shopping from websites in different countries, but it's like why? why do I need it? You know, it's just pretty packaging. I didn't feel the need to own any of those colors or anything like that. If I bought them, it was just like a collection thing and I don't need to be spending my money collecting makeup that I won't touch or use. So that is everything for my February anti-haul video, guys. I am so sorry that this one is going up a little bit late. I did have to kind of film a little bit later than I, than I wanted to, but that is okay. Better late than never. I will have a March anti-haul up pretty soon-ish, so in the next couple of weeks you can look forward to that. And let me know what products you are anti-hauling um, in March or February, whatever you decide, and I will see you guys in my next video soon. Bye!